are paranormal phenomena studied only by, let's say, esotericists and amateur researchers? Surprisingly not. But there are scientists who are trying to study these phenomena as well. Dean Radin studied electrical engineering and also psychology of education. In September 2017 he visited Prague as a renowned parapsychologist. My first question to him was obvious. Can the paranormal phenomena be real? Can it be real? Well, first of all, science is a set of methods. So anything can be studied using those methods. Uh, if you look at the last 150 years of scientific studies, both in the laboratory and outside of the laboratory, to answer the question, are these phenomena real? The answer is yes. They're as real as any other phenomena that science has studied. There's a separate question, though, which is, then why is this not considered a mainstream topic? And that has much more to do with the paradigms in science, our assumptions about the way things work, rather than the phenomena themselves. So as an example, last year the president of the American Statistical Association is a woman named Jessica Utz. She's a professor and chair of statistics at the University of California at Irvine. And she also happened to be the president of the American Statistical Association. So last summer, or in the summer of 2016, uh, there was a meeting of the Joint Statistical Associations, which are something like 2,000 or 3,000 professional statisticians from around the world meeting in Chicago. One of Jessica's specialties is studying the data from parapsychological studies. So she mentioned in her presidential address something that was probably unexpected from the rest of all the statisticians because she mentioned that she had studied the literature and the data from parapsychological studies, and her, her, she basically said that the phenomena are real as best as we can tell from a scientific perspective. Now this is being said from a statistician whose job is to analyze data in the proper way. So from that perspective, analyzing data in the proper way, collected in the proper way, these are real phenomena. Dean Radin is perceived as a controversial figure. However, he himself claims that he does the same as other scientists. He looks for an explanation. That has been what science has always done, right? So you, you look at, uh, if you go far enough back in history, everything was magical and mystical because we didn't have explanations for anything. So science has slowly been chopping away and getting better and better explanations for things. And this is just another domain of human experience where that is slowly taking place as well. Just as alchemy has turned into chemistry, paranormal phenomena will be explained. I'm actually working on magic itself. My, my next book will be on magic. What do I mean by magic? So you look at the evolution of chemistry. It was alchemy to chemistry. Astronomy was more or less astrology to astronomy. Uh, pharmaceuticals were originally herbal medicine. All of those, these ancient or medieval methods were considered the transition from pure magic into natural magic, meaning it's not the gods who are doing it, but it's some kind of natural thing we don't understand yet. So natural magic, like the beginnings of alchemy, after it became refined by scientific methods, it became chemistry. So it's no longer, it doesn't, doesn't have any magical elements to it. So there are four elements of this medieval forms of magic, of natural magic, and one that is still left out and that was the mental side. So the mental side of, of ancient magic is what parapsychology studies. We know that the phenomena are real, and by the way, that doesn't mean all phenomena are real. It means certain classes have been studied. So we know that certain classes of phenomena are real. We don't yet have explanations for them that, that are scientifically acceptable by everyone, but that the, we're at the stage which is the beginning of the transition from alchemy to chemistry. Certain things you do, you get certain kinds of results. And that's basically where we are in terms of science today. If Dean Radin is right, we are at the forefront of a new science. Well, the, the mental side of magic will change into uh, something like an academic discipline called psychophysical interactions. It should be called psychophysics. 
because it's literally the, the relationship between mind and matter. That's what it is, psychophysics. But psychophysics is already a name of a discipline, so we can't use that. So we use another name, something like psychophysical interactions. Researchers working on paranormal phenomena such as Dean Radin face criticism from some skeptics. I look back at the history of skepticism about virtually every advancement in science. There have always been people who are saying, no, you can't fly an airplane because it's physically impossible. And no, you can't go to the moon because it's physically impossible. On and on and on. My suspicion is that the people who are the strong skeptics saying this is impossible, first of all, they don't know the nature of the, of the laboratory studies. Uh, and, that, and this is fairly easy to point out, that if you, somebody comes up to me and says, well, this stuff isn't any real, I say, well, what, what literature have you been reading? And, and maybe they'll talk about some skeptical articles. Well, what of the actual experimental studies have you read? The answer is either none, which is not very satisfying, or they'll have one. They'll say, okay, that's very good. You know one paper. Well, what about the other thousand papers? What do you know? They don't know what the literature actually is. So the skepticism is generally being driven by the idea of the way that entertainment portrays these phenomena and also, also portrays the experiments that are being done. It's portraying it in an extremely simplistic way, which is easy to criticize. The actual experiments are not so easy to criticize. Of course, I approached skeptics before the release of this video. A polemical video will probably appear here, we will see. Back to Dean Radin. According to him, many things which are inexplicable today can be explained by quantum physics and understanding of how consciousness works. What I've been working on for the past eight or nine years is primarily looking at uh, the quantum measurement problem using optical physics methods. And the reason I'm doing that is because it, the, the quantum measurement problem is talking about the nature of observation in physical systems. It is an outstanding problem within mainstream physics. Uh, there's leading physicists who are beginning to question whether consciousness is relevant to this issue, as the founders of quantum mechanics were all saying as well. And what is not generally understood is that there are ways of actually testing whether consciousness is relevant or not. And so these, these look like parapsychological experiments, even though it's optical physics. And these studies are able to address two things at the same time. They're able to say, is there in fact some kind of a mind-matter interaction? And if so, is it relevant to understanding and in the interpretations of quantum mechanics? So this is parapsychology but with a, a, a one foot firmly in the mainstream because it addresses questions that are outstanding in the mainstream. But the question is, when will we understand all of this? When will it be? The, the way I answer that question is that it, it's either next Tuesday or it's 100 years from next Tuesday. And at this point, it's probably closer to 100 years than it is coming up. Uh, so another way of thinking of it is that in our understanding of electricity, it took thousands of years for us to make the transition from figuring out that rubbing certain kinds of amber would create sparks and static electricity and making a connection with that to lightning. So that took a long time. It took even longer to figure out that lightning and static electricity could be useful for something. So we're at the stage at this point, kind of like Benjamin Franklin was, in figuring out that there are ways of evoking the phenomenon. The explanations are way further down the line. And I suspect that in order to get an explanation, we're going to have to have radical changes in our assumptions that underlie science today. That doesn't mean that we throw away the textbooks. It means that our, uh, our assumptions about what underlies science is going to change. And the way I think of it is this, that science has developed into a kind of knowledge pyramid that we, we imagine physics is the bottom of this pyramid and then we have chemistry and biology and so on. And things emerge from lower levels into higher levels. And the assumption is that everything is material, that physics is at the bottom. But when you start looking carefully at the, the strata within physics, like classical physics, quantum physics, quantum field theory and so on, the further down you go, the more abstract the, our definitions of physicality become. And there's a growing number of mainstream physicists, mathematicians, 
we're beginning to say that the very bottom, as far as we can tell, is really information. It's, not, it's like abstract information. It's not physical anymore, but abstract information. If you keep pushing in that direction with more abstract mathematics, more abstract information, and now symbology, because mathematics is a symbol language, basically, you start entering a realm where that becomes closer and closer to what we might think of as consciousness. We're talking about consciousness as really the fundamental, and then the next layer up is the physical. So you take this knowledge pyramid, which all of our university disciplines are, are very well versed in, none of that changes. The only thing that changes is that we put a new layer on the bottom, which is consciousness or awareness or something like that. And now the question is, well, how do you transition from that into physicality? Well, we don't know yet, but that, that would be the leading edge of, of science, of physics, or below physics, say. But now if you imagine that what I just said is true, that this is consciousness or awareness that is prior to space-time, it's prior to physics. That means just like electrons in the physical layer can be found all the way up, that would mean that consciousness at the bottom level can also be found all the way up, and it's before space-time. According to Dean Radin, we are at the very beginning, but will we ever be at the end? No. The, the game is never finished. So the, this knowledge pyramid, if you think of it in that case, we'll always find new layers below that. But what could be solved is that our understanding now, when we talk about ideas like magic or even spiritual, we will have much better ideas of what we're talking about when we use those words. That's what I think is going to happen. So a large chunk of spirituality, a large chunk of what we call the paranormal, psychic phenomena, all of that, will, will then fit into our, under, our larger, more comprehensive understanding of how the physical world works. And also, our ideas about what physical means and what material means have radically changed over the last century and will continue to change. Dean Radin is criticized by skeptics. Next time, I will give them space if they are interested and if they find the time.